60 million people in China are under lockdown. Economic activity is slowing as consumers stay home and businesses cut back on production and trade. And Asia is also feeling the spillover effect. China's economy. In 2003 it was about 4% of the global economy, now it's approaching 17%. So we're looking at an economy which is very much bigger, it's much more complex, there are much more interconnections with the rest of the world. For Asia, the slowdown in Chinese consumption will be keenly felt in the tourism sector. If you look at Thailand, for example, in 2003, the Chinese tourist was a negligible portion. Today, it's about 27%. The same goes for Singapore. The Chinese tourist has grown manifold over the last several years. Industries like hotels, airlines, and casino gaming will feel the fallout. The retail industry will also be hit. Besides the tourist dollars, Asia may also lose the export dollars as Chinese demand drops. China is now the, the largest export destination for a, for a number of Asian economies. Fear of infection is also creating deferred consumption as people avoid shopping, eating out and traveling. Some economists say this deferred consumption will cause most of the economic damage. And some of that economic loss may be unrecoverable. You cannot really replicate what you were doing in the past. For example, just because you didn't go for a movie in the month of January doesn't mean you'll see three movies once things change. Fear is also feeding through the financial markets. You know, we've seen sell-offs across uh, a number of, of Asian markets over the past week, and that is because investors find it very difficult to price this kind of uncertainty. China is the factory of the world and factory closures in the country will ripple through the global supply chain. Countries like Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, they're all part of these, these larger supply chains. Logistics services will also be affected, dealing a further blow to supply chains. Moody says Hubei province is a big logistics hub for China. It's a, a province which represents about 7% of China's GDP. It's not insignificant, and it sits at the middle of a lot of transportation links. So the fact that the, the province is under effective lockdown at the moment does have an impact in terms of distribution, supply chains, and so on. But economists say supply chains can be quickly brought back online once the situation recovers. If you look at capacity utilization rates in Asia today, they are significantly suboptimal. So there is scope to expand that output again. Once they come back to work, instead of producing, say, 10 iPhones a day, they certainly can increase it to 15. We will advise investors uh, to remain on the sideline for um, uh, Chinese equities at the moment. We will advise to wait for these new cases to peak before investors um, look to bargain hunt in uh, Chinese equities. Looking at the other Asian markets, we'll advise investors to stay on the sideline, wait for uh, some clarity and uncertainty to be removed uh, before they start to bargain hunt. When SARS happened, China had only just joined the WTO at that point, and we saw then you know, the, a real pickup in growth on the back of WTO membership in, in China. This time around, the, the outbreak has occurred when China's economy is already slowing down, it's already under certain pressure from, from the trade war with the US. I would be a bit cautious about expecting a really rapid rebound.